edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. This is your first time tuning into the show. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Dan Wolkenstein, the date is April 2nd, but by God, you wouldn't know it based off of Jim Harbaugh's comments at the podium today, Ben Herbert's comments at the podium today. You would have thought it was the first day of OTAs or training camp because Talk about just getting you fired up. I know that like, like we're in peak draft season right now, but this is this is the ultimate just ah like football needs to be back type moment because it's just like we need to see these guys out there in pads right now going up against each other. I mean, again, you would have thought that this was the beginning of the preseason based on some of the comments today. We had Ben Herbert, or excuse me, we had Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Hayden Hurst, Ben Herbert at the podium today, just talking about the first day uh, of getting everybody back into the training room trying for organized uh, team activities. But Dan Walkenstein, I'm fired up to talk about this. And we're just talking about comments. We didn't see anything. There was <laughs> no on-field drills going on today. But by God, there were quotes galore that just made you want to get up and go shoulder block a brick wall honestly <laughs> and, and we're we're gonna get into all of that uh yeah jake you heard jim harbaugh at the coaches meeting april 2nd april 2nd april 2nd that's what he was geared up for and because new coaching staff you get to get in a couple weeks earlier than the rest of the folk and we have hit april 2nd and it did not disappoint and it just feels good. It still is crazy to me, Jake, that we're seeing Jim Harbaugh sport the bolt on the shirt, on the hat. The guy looks fired up. And we'll get into all of the, the discussion and the, like the key points. But like for me, you're right. The energy, man. Like the enthusiasm unknown to mankind was flowing through that press conference. And it permeates through the team through the players, the front office, the staff, like all of them. And uh, it's it's fun to finally have Chargers football back. You said it. They're not in pads right now. No one's getting hit up, lit up. But we're talking about things that are really, really important, things that have been lacking from this team. So lots of takeaways. Uh, also, Jake, Chargers signed somebody today. <laughs> Yeah, right. Literally right after the press conference was over, <laughs> it was announced that the Chargers signed former Baltimore Raven, former Michigan Wolverine, H-back Ben Mason. So the Chargers officially now have a fullback on their roster. Been a minute. It's been a minute. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's there in terms of a fullback that's actually coming in and making an impact. Yes, it, it's been a minute, but there's a lot to like about Ben Mason, when you get to dig into his tape, um, and again, it fits into the mold of everything that we have heard Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman talk about what they want to do to revitalize this run game. Yes. Uh, so, Jake, we'll get into it. You said we're going to get into all the press conference takeaways, things that we thought were interesting, some of the quotes. But before we do that, Jake, let's pay the bills. Let's talk about our friends. I want to remind everybody that the easiest way to get into all of the sports action, it's underdog fantasy and their pick'em game. Just pick higher or lower on your favorite or least favorite player stats, and you could win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Underdog keeps it super simple with their easy-to-use website and mobile apps. Just pick between two and five players to fill out your pick'em entry. Get every pick right and take home some cold, hard cash. Use the promo code UNLEASHED and get your first deposit doubled up to $500 by Underdog. Go on over to Underdog Fantasy today and let them know the Chargers Unleashed sent you. Owners meeting, coach, excuse me, coaches meeting. Fast forward. April 2nd. April 2nd for those April watching. 2nd. April 2nd? Jim Harbaugh sporting the Chargers colors at the podium today, Jake. Uh, energy in full flux. You heard lots of takeaways, lots of kind of key themes. The eagerness, the lift that I think was permeated between player and coaching staff, the energy. Ben Herbert talks about like the urgency within that locker room. Um, key takeaways. What were some of the biggest things that you got from Jim Harbaugh today? Jim Harbaugh is just if you if you didn't get the emotion from him during his introductory press conference a couple months ago, it just the energy's not going anywhere. 
from Jim. You know, again, we're not in pads. We're not actually out there doing drills yet. But the energy from Jim is just still there. First of all, he opens the press conference by basically saying, you know, this feels like a happy new year, you know, first day back at school. Goes on to say that this is the best job that he has had to start with. And I'm assuming in terms of assistant coaches, personnel around him. So lauding all of that, just you can see the excitement permeating out of him. The best part about this entire sequence of question and answer from Jim Harbaugh is that it's very Jim Harbaugh. If we know anything about any interviews that we ever heard from Jim Harbaugh at Michigan or back in the day of, of San Francisco, it's very on point for how Jim Harbaugh talks. Just Again, throwing out the one-liners. Dan, you mentioned the enthusiasm beyond all mankind. He's got fat is the biggest enemy of speed. It's just like, it's so true. But it's just like the way it comes in sequencing when talking about training. It's just like, yes, that's absolutely true. That's something that you would probably read on like the wall of 24-hour fitness. <laughs> and here he is just dropping these type of things. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to put that on my mirror every morning before I wake right. up. Just a reminder. Of- just a reminder. <laughs> uh, but there's going to be a lot of cross conversation here between what Jim Harbaugh had to say about Ben Herbert and then what Ben Herbert had to say about Jim Harbaugh, because there were a lot of questions presented to Jim about Jim or excuse me to Jim about Ben Herbert and what he's going to be bringing to this locker room, because obviously that was one of the big additions in the off season and bringing in um, Ben Herbert as the strength and conditioning coach. It's obviously been well-documented for so many years, but this was some of the quotes that Jim Harbaugh had to say about Ben Herbert. So basically saying he's going to be in the weight room from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, bring in the energy, bring in the, the detail oriented style that he likes to bring when it comes to training and building people up. Dan, this is probably one of the best <laughs> analogies I've ever heard. Jim Harbaugh compared Ben Herbert to Ben Affleck's character in the account. If you haven't seen the account, Ben Affleck's character is extremely detail oriented. So in those type of scenes, and this is actually what Jim's going through. He's saying he's only got one fork. He's only got one knife and he's only got one plate. When he cooks his food for cooking for breakfast, he's got three pancakes. He's got three eggs. He's got three pieces of bacon. And when he sits down, he's separating everything. He doesn't want any food touching one another. Just like, so detail oriented. That was basically how Jim Harbaugh was describing Ben Herbert and uh, his attention to detail. But he basically said that he's going to be in there in the weight room with the energy to make them better. He's there for them. Mental, physical. There's a bounce in his step today when he comes up. And trust me, once he got to the podium, and we'll talk about him in a little bit. Once he got to the podium, you're like, oh my God, this guy hasn't uttered one word. And he already means business. Um, So that just goes to show you what it means a little bit more about Jim Harbaugh bringing in Ben Herbert. Dan, quickly, your thoughts on some of that. Yeah, I I think when we heard the Jim Harbaugh coming to the Chargers news and then Ben Herbert, it has been widely talked about how impressive and how successful Ben Herbert has been in Michigan and how good and how credible he is as a strength and conditioning guru. And the confidence that he brings to Jim Harbaugh and the staff and the experience that he brings, it permeates through the building. And, you know, Jim Harbaugh had said Ben Herbert is the best he's ever seen as a strength coach. And we're talking Jim Harbaugh who has seen, some dudes considering his family ties to football and Ben Herbert having arguably the best of the best. He talks about kind of like the, the baseline training I thought was really interesting, which we'll get to what Hayden Hurst and Ben Herbert talk about it. But this was more about like setting up the scheme and philosophy stuff. And then talks about baseline training. And that goes to Ben Herbert and kind of how, meticulous he is about caring for his players and so i think the the part for me that jim harbour that jim harbaugh brought today was just the energy 
that he has because of the folks that he brought in and the players on the field or in the locker room today. And it's just refreshing, I think, to have a coach who has a proven track record, who brings in a staff that he has had proven success with. And to have that energy and excitement and to have the players bought in. And again, this is day one. Who knows? But you saw a whole bunch of players there. While it's quote-unquote voluntary, all of them were there. The ones that at least, actually all of them. I'm sure there were some that weren't. But you saw Durbin was there. You saw uh, Alohi Gilman was there. Justin Herbert was there. Players and the team are bought in. And so there was one little nugget that he had talked about at the very beginning of the press conference, Jake, that I wanted to get to real quick is he kind of talked about like how important this time of the off season is. And he talked about the drafts and training, but he harped on and kind of took a little extended pause about free agency and specifically saying, quote, free agency goes on for a while. And I know how eager Chargers fans are to get some of these players drafted. And we're wanting to know why they haven't signed XYZ free agent. You've heard people talk about it. There are waves of free agency. And I am as confident as you can be. I can't say 100%, but I'll go 99.5 that there will be more free agents. And the fact, to your point, the fact that the fullback was signed <laughs> during the press conference is pretty hilarious. Um, so Jim Harbaugh, like he's a coach's coach. And his staff that he brought in, I think he also talked about the fact that like he's expecting this staff to be built like a pipeline and they set up their own pipeline, expect them to be poached. And again, that's what Jim Harbaugh does. He develops coaches just as well, if not better than players. Yeah. His exact quote on that, as it relates to the coaching staff that's been created now uh, for the Chargers, says, I also like to have coaches that are the next position coaches and guys that are getting their start, like a pipeline, we just set up our own internal pipeline. There's a progression there. He says, I will predict that there will be head coaches that come off of this staff. You got to love that mentality. You really do. Because that's, that's where you start. So not only do you set up coaches that are now eventually, obviously, going to end up finding their own success, but you keep building that internally to where it's – you don't have to go out and look so much to externally coaches. Obviously, will that at some point change? Yes. But when we're talking about just turnover in general, which happens to a lot of teams that find success for their coaching staff, all I'll look at what happened to the Baltimore Ravens this past year, you're set up for success because you're already building that pipeline. That is a fantastic mentality to start building and a mindset to have among your coaches in terms of, how you want to grow this staff. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you one piece on the, on the fullback thing. And you can look at this two different ways, but before we get to Hayden Hurst and Ben Herbert, you're seeing a lot of plucking former players connected to this staff, specifically the Ravens and, or Michigan, but mostly the Ravens and hell, you can say coaching staff. You look at Navarro Bowman as well. Do you find it, as a positive or negative that so many of the guys that this staff has brought in have been former Ravens. Is that a good thing a, or a bad thing? I find it as a great thing. I find it as a great thing. Now I, I, I get that whole idea of where you're trying to go from there. It's like, okay, are the chargers trying to become Baltimore West essentially? But I mean, no, why, why wouldn't you think that this is a great thing, whether it's for Hayden Hurst or for Gus Edwards or any other player that's had familiarity with Jim Bozeman, Harbaugh or same way. yes, you're going to, you're going to get these guys that are going to hit the ground running as Hayden Hurst goes on to say today, the, the, ter the terminology and the translation between John Harbaugh and Jim Harbaugh is virtually the same. So why wouldn't you want something like that from an outside free agent and not want some familiarity and to get kind of a leg up on the rest of the locker room and kind of like use them to say to the rest of the guys that aren't so familiar with the terminology to say, Hey, this is where we're going with this. This is what he's looking for. You know, this is what he's saying in this circumstance. So I, I look, if we're talking about, especially as it relates to the run game, 
I have no issues with this at all. <laughs> from the from the tight end standpoint, the Chargers have needed that. Now it may not be that some of the names that people were initially thinking in terms of going out and doing that, but look, whether it's the Baltimore Ravens or anybody else, what Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman have talked about in terms of revitalizing the run game and getting guys to come in here and be more physical that can block. So far, so good. I know we haven't gotten to the draft yet, and this roster is far from over. But in terms of making low-level moves with familiarity that still fit into the overall scheme of what you want to do and what you're setting out to do, yeah, check. Yeah, and I think that's where I understand... Because I think there's two sides to this, right? It's like, come on, can, can we not like get our own guys? Can we not develop our own players? And to some extent, like, I get it. But also, the draft hasn't happened yet. So like, what, what are you supposed to do? Um, free agency, again, you mentioned it. They're not going for like these huge top-tier talent, at least not yet. Although those rumors of the Tyler Boyd connection, who knows? Um, but I'll say this to the people who are kind of grumpy about the not going outside of Baltimore land. Like, especially for the run game. Like, beggars can't be choosers, man. The Chargers have had zero run game. Very little pass protection. Zero successful scheme. And so, if they go and get everyone from Baltimore and then they tell me that that will turn into a successful running game, cool. <laughs> Sign me up because until the run game is fixed, I don't care who they bring in. If they can fix it, I'm golden. So smooth transition to you, Jake. Hayden Hurst at the podium today. And you talked about him referring to the ease of transition from previous coaching regimes to now with Greg Roman. Hayden Hurst was talking about, I think there's also to mention about like the concussion that he went through before where it actually wasn't nearly as bad as I think some people may have reported mm -hmm. that it was maybe a week to week thing. And then, because the team was so bad that they just said, whatever, just like shut it down. It's not worth it. Uh, what were the main takeaways for you for Hayden Hurst before we get to the star of the show today, which is Ben Herbert? Yeah, I mean, he talked about obviously why it was an easy decision to come to the Chargers based on the familiarity between Jim Harbaugh, uh, Greg Roman, jo Joe Hortiz. It just made it an easy decision for him. You talked about the concussion aspect. He detailed that um, and basically saying that that was more of a front office move to keep him from playing for that duration of time. So it sounded like it was more precautionary than anything else, which, you know, whichever way you want to look at it, obviously concussions are no uh, small matter whatsoever, but in that circumstance, it, it doesn't seem like it was more of the concussions that was keeping him off. It would sound like that was more of a front office decision in that circumstance. Um, went in to talk about Jim Harbaugh. And this was basically his quote that he had said about Jim Harbaugh. I said, he wants to win. And he wants to get guys to get, he wants guys to get better. He wants guys to get healthy, have success. It, it just makes it fun. This is really a long season. If you don't have the right people in place, it may, it obviously, obviously when, 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 if, if you don't have the right people in place, there's a big difference for that. That, that last part wasn't hit, part of his quote, but you get the, you get the mentality of where Jim is coming from in that circumstance. Yeah, and I think one piece that we hear a lot of people talking about is why a lot of people are still mentioning the idea of the Chargers going off as a tackle at five and how important the trenches and physicality are to Jim Harbaugh and company. Hayden Hurst talked about the emphasis that Jim Harbaugh put on physicality specifically. And was talking about like it literally being in PowerPoints that were presented. Yep. And kind of the goal to impose their will on other teams by the time the clock runs out. This is how Jim Harbaugh wins. And you've heard a few people who are familiar with Jim Harbaugh's teams over the over the years. Like they impose their will, they dominate you to where they win physically, mentally, emotionally and just grind out teams. That's how they win. And how often, Jake, have we seen this Chargers team be on the receiving end of that and have been broken? Too many and times. you watch it happen. 
I don't remember the last time. Maybe Marty Ball was the last time I saw the Chargers have that type of identity, which even that identity isn't quite this. But it's been a decade plus since we've seen the Chargers be the physically imposing team. And that's what Hayden Hurst spoke to. Ben Herbert talks about this too, but Jim Harbaugh talks about it as well. Like that's what, and like the funny maniacal part is like, this team's going to get off on that. Yeah. It, it really gets you excited for Greg Roman's philosophy, what he wants to do. I mean, it should be no secret. Obviously, Greg Roman likes to run the ball. He's had success in doing it as an offensive coordinator in San Francisco and in Baltimore. Uh, Hayden Hurst talked about that just in terms of his coach coaching philosophy. He just quickly just said he's downhill physical and he's coming at you. He said it, he knows that entire scheme to his core. What I really liked in terms of him detailing that, he said, you kind of take it as a challenge because in terms of for 60 minutes of playing football, you're basically going to outwork them. Hayden said, I know that I can do that. But some other players in the league can't do that for 60 minutes. So it's a mano a mano challenge. Are you up for it? And he's, he's to, to himself, he's like, I know I can do that. It's then my job to go out and outwork the guy who's playing against me for 60 minutes. And that kind of ties into the star of the show, in my opinion. (laughs) Plenty (laughs) of little notes from this man. Ben Herbert, strength and conditioning, director of player performance. (laughs) Dude, like run through a brick wall the moment he steps up at the podium. God. And Hayden Hurst talked about like some of the specifics where I said earlier about Jim Harbaugh with baseline training and Hayden Hurst had talked about that baseline test where he said like, that's not something that they've seen in the NFL and the staff wanting to kind of like fix you from the ground up and see your deficiencies and breaking everything down to where some of those like soft tissue injuries and stuff don't happen as much. And obviously he's referring to Ben Herbert's program and Insert stage left, Ben Herbert. And the specificity and the focus and the experience and the confidence and the rationale behind all of it and the trust that he has gotten from his previous teams, rosters, and knowing he will get that from this team, but you, it is built. Ben Herbert is the real deal, man. Wow. Like that, like, like Jim Harbaugh, where he's forgotten more than most people have learned when it comes to football and coaching. Ben Herbert's the same way with player performance that he feels like the type where you can go to him about anything health related and he can go a mile deep on whatever topic you want. Ben Herbert, dude, he's, he's got these, he has these guys going in a direction that they have never gone before. And I don't say that lightly, like literally they're doing things they've never done. This may have been like the closest fly on the wall type of situation that we could have gotten here. Because when Ben Herbert took the stage, first of all, when he gets up there before he even says a word, his eyes are just like wide open. He's got this like, you know, just happy little grin for the folks face. watching, for folks watching, look at the picture. <laughs> like this is him. I mean, that, that was pretty much it. Just like <laughs> laser cool. focused. I got a, you know, cool ass smirk on my face. Like, what do you got for me? Because I'm ready to go. I just came out of these meetings and I'm hyped. First of all, one of the first things he said was he was explaining what he was telling the players. He said, "I am here for one reason. That's to impact you in the most positive way." Then he basically went off on five key things that he explained to the players in terms of what it is that they're going to be doing in terms of this strength and conditioning program in a macro sense. He says, one, he's like, I'm going to make you harder to break. And he he kind of changed that whole narrative. It's like, you know, you hear about training programs, breaking people down. That's not how I do things. I make you harder to break. Two, we talked about consistency. How, if you can work at this consistently, you're going to make yourself better. Three, attention to detail. This is where 
everything from Jim Harbaugh came into place in terms of what he was talking about that. And I'll elaborate this on this, but he was basically saying the way that they have set up the weight room. If you go into a weight room and you have a 45 pound plate, in the case of the chargers, they have plates on there that are the rogue brand. So they have rogue written on them. When you get in there, the word rogue is set in a certain way. (laughs) When the players take those off and when they put them back on the rack on the pile, he wants them to put them back in the exact same way. He wants all the rogue words on each one of the plates facing the exact way. That was basically how he was saying it. Four was emotional stability. And five, bigger, faster, stronger. Right then is when I decided to make a tweet because obviously I was just sitting there watching this in just complete awe and I wanted to go you know, outside and for a second workout today after hearing that already. But I basically said, if, if Ben Herbert ever came, came out with a strength and conditioning workout routine video, I would buy it. And then I got to thank Boltzilla on Twitter for this because literally within five minutes, he says, oh, you mean this? And he attaches a link that apparently there was, there was a workout video that he created at his time in Michigan. It says 45 exercises for strength and conditioning by Ben <laughs> Herbert. Yeah. And I'm like, we I'm all like need to get to this. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sold. Sold. You got me. So kudos to him for being just on the spot with that. Uh, Dan, there's plenty, to, there's plenty more from this, but just that first little bit of those, fir- those first quotes from Ben Herbert takeaways. Uh, the the making you harder to break, I think the the nuance there is special. There's this idea that a lot of people utilize where they say like, oh, you're prehabbing so you don't have to rehab, right? You're prehabbing so that you don't get injured. And he kind of doesn't go by that philosophy. He's more about breaking things down and preparing you for playing to where you can reduce the possibility of getting injured. And it might sound the same, but it's different in the sense that he focuses on the granular pieces of your body and body parts to make it, to make it more value, more malleable, to make it stronger, to make it more flexible, to not just prevent injury, but to make you a better player and to maximize what you have. I mean, he's talking about stuff around like lean mass and he's talking about how to get things in a way for you to maximize your potential. But To have someone on your staff that has that proven track record making these players harder to break, to your point. To bring in consistency and emotional stability, which, Jake, we've seen this team kind of go off the rails emotionally and have some boneheaded decisions that have cost this team dearly. Like, this is important stuff, and I think it's interesting that it's coming from the strength and conditioning department because obviously like that comes from the head coach, but to develop that at such a ground floor of not just how they're coached, but how they're trained, how they're exercised. Like that's a big change for this team. And so, so far, like, I mean, obviously I'm sold, but, The goal is not to break you. The goal is to make you harder to break. Like I thought that was such a gold quote and a pillar. There were were so many times that I felt like I was just getting a crash course in kinesiology from, from Ben Herbert because he was just start talking about these, you know, your, your ankle, your soft tissue injuries. Even Jim Harbaugh kind of talked about things that he talked about as it relates to the neck and to the traps. He's like, that's the most important muscles to reduce head injuries. And Jim Harbaugh kind of explained it like, you know, do you want a steel rod in your neck or do you want a noodle? Is is how Jim Harbaugh explained it. It's just like, you know, what, what side of that coin do you want to be on? Um, Dan, he went on to talk about the infamous shop back home Depot story with Jim Harbaugh, basically just when they got into the weight room, again, another aspect of how detail oriented Ben Herbert is basically told Jim said, Hey, I, I need a shot back. Cause I need to clean up the weight room. So they went to the home Depot, got a shot back, came back and just, again, attention to detail. He said, every inch of that room, we went through and vacuumed it, reorganized it, 
And the players, when they got in there, they could tell that obviously everything was different. Nothing is going to be missed with Ben Herbert like this. When you just see what may, what some people would consider just a trivial thing. This is how big of a deal he is making to bring a different result. So I guess what I would finish on, and Jim Harbaugh had said this about Ben Herbert as well, what you do speaks so loudly that I can't hear what you say. That was Ben Herbert's message. It's taking that whole action speak louder than words to a whole new level. Let everything you do speak so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. Get up. (laughs) Go do something right now. Whatever it is that you're doing, I need to go do something right now. I need to get off this podcast and go do (laughs) something right now. I feel lazy enough here talking about it. I need to go do something. It's fair. It's it's so true. And Ben Herbert talked about, you you said... Jim Harbaugh, like Ben Herbert talked about how easy of a decision it was for him to go along with Jim Harbaugh to LA and he, how gracious and how grateful he was for the opportunity that Jim Harbaugh has given him and essentially said how it's a very brief conversation he had with his wife. And they immediately said, yep, we're going. And how well those two work together. It really is incredible to me, Jake, like how much of an impact Ben Herbert has had on Jim Harbaugh and how important he was to this coaching staff. I it's wild to me. Like it's the fact that they're having the director of player performance at the podium on the first day of like that doesn't happen. Unless it's someone of the stature of Ben Herbert with the proven success and track record of Ben Herbert going on to say, like, I don't, I'm not known to give bad advice at some point. This team will understand that I'm giving them what's in their best interest. The dude just gets it, man. And he's got a stock full of receipts (laughs) of good decisions and examples of the things that he does and why it works. Uh, I was not expecting this to get me fired up, but whoa, he was flamethrower. I mean, do you think that the Chargers, in terms of players, by the time that we get to mini camp and training camp, that they're not going to be in a hell of a lot better shape than they normally are at that period of the year? Oh my God. It just reminds me of like being battle tested. Like yes. you, you, you hear infamous stories of the team, like back with Michigan or even in San Francisco, where like pra- you've heard stories of, like practices were harder than football games, and that's kind of what it's like. You're starting to see stuff like this. You're starting to see why, and to be battle tested and to have like the emotional stability and to have the conditioning, you're getting why it's happening. Like look who's leading the effort. Yeah, and, and look, I, I know I'm very hyped up about those Ben Herbert comments, and nor am I saying that he is going to be the one that's going to turn everything around, but I damn sure believe that he is going to be the, a foundation of a change as it relates to these players. Obviously, the rest of the position coaches are going to have their work cut out of them. The players themselves are going to have their work cut out for them in, in order to get better. But in terms of Ben Herbert, and this is why so many people talked about how important this hire was. He is going to create that foundation in order for them to take that next step in their play to get better. It's like a full circle, uh, holistic approach to football success that we just don't see very often in this industry. So uh, exciting times. Day one, April 2nd, April 2nd, April 2nd is officially behind us as... Everything starts. They're implementing stuff offensively, philosoph- philosophical on defense. Try to get the program set up for strength and conditioning. And all that buy-in, all that work uh, starts today. Jake, anything else? Any big rocks? Any quotes we missed that we want to discuss before we get out of here? I think we covered all the big ones, my friend. It's, it's now like... I just made a tweet about you know these next 23 days before the draft. 
are going to feel like the longest 23 days of the year. Today almost made me wanted to say, you know, is it is it August yet? <laughs> oh, is it August yet? That's what I felt watching this press conference. It's like I know we got plenty of time to go before we get back to the preseason. But this made me want to go to work. This made me want football to come back. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Big news. A special guest episode coming to you on Thursday. Be on the lookout for that one. Uh, so make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Make sure you turn on notifications so you can see or hear the next time the episode comes up. But uh, Jake, I think that'll wrap it up for Jake. You can find him at Jake T. Hefter, myself at Dan W. Sports. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll talk to you next time on Charger.